chemical kinetics tells you about the rate of reaction the factors affecting the rate of reaction the order of reaction now the first thing is the rate of reaction can never be negative for example for the reaction n2 plus 3h2 giving you 2 nh3 if rate with respect to ammonia is plus 1.4 into 10 to the power minus 5 molar per, moles per liter per second then rate with respect to nitrogen will be dear students in order to equalize the reaction rate divide them by their stoichiometric coefficients so we can write upon dt is equal to half into d ammonia upon dt now the value of rate with respect to ammonia he has given to you so we can write the rate with respect to nitrogen will be equal to that of half of the rate of reaction with respect to ammonia minus sign is not to be taken into consideration this only tells you that the concentration is decreasing so the correct answer will be half into 1.4 into 10 to the power minus 5 which is 7 into 10 to the power minus 6 once again dear students keep it in mind that minus is not to be written before theoretical value that represents only the symbolic because rate is final minus initial final can never be more than initial so we put a minus sign so that the rate comes out to be negative now the order of reaction is the powers to which the concentration term must be raised in order to determine the reaction rate dear students order of reaction can be zero first second third these order can be predicted from half life period they can also be predicted from the graph between the concentration versus time they can also be predicted by Oswald dilution law let us take another question if the graph between log of t half versus log of concentration is as shown below then the order of reaction is you see t1 upon t2 is equal to c1 upon c2 raised to power 1 minus n where n is the order of reaction so t1 half life period is directly proportional to concentration raised to power 1 minus n taking log t half is equal to k in plus 1 minus n into log c when you are plotting a graph between log of concentration versus log of uh, half life period the graph comes out to be a straight line and tangent theta gives you the slope slope is 1 minus n tangent 45 is 1 so 1 minus n is equal to 1 hence n is equal to 0 so it is a zero order reaction now if the graph between concentration of product versus time for the reaction is given then the graph between rate of reaction versus time will be so you have to predict in which case the graph will be a straight line between the concentration and time in the case of zero order reaction the rate does not depend upon time so the graph will always come out to be a straight line as it is shown it means that this is a zero order reaction now for zero order reaction the rate versus time will be parallel to x axis because the rate will remain same hence the correct answer is second regarding the factors affecting the rate of reaction you know the different factors are nature which we cannot change surface area greater the surface area greater will be the contact greater will be the rate of reaction that is why powdered charcoal burns faster than a lump of charcoal another factor is temperature according to Arrhenius the rate of reaction is dependent upon temperature which is given by the expression k is equal to a into e raised to power minus e upon rt means k the rate constant is the exponential function of temperature now if the question is a schematic plot of natural log of k versus time for a reaction is as shown what the reaction will be exothermic endothermic athermic highly spontaneous in order to solve this question you know delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s 
which is equal to minus RT ln K. So dividing it, you will get ln K is equal to minus delta H upon RT plus T delta S upon RT. So natural log of K is equal to minus delta H upon RT plus delta S upon R. He has plotted a graph between natural log of K versus 1 upon T which is coming out to be a straight line with positive slope. It means that the value of equilibrium constant is increasing with temperature. So if the reaction is delta H is negative, then negative negative will be positive. So the slope will be positive. That is why this reaction is exothermic. Had it been endothermic, the slope would have been negative because before delta H, you have a negative sign. In the same way, he can ask you another question. Supposing the value of T is infinity, when T approaches infinity, dear students, K will be equal to the number of collisions taking place. The third question he can ask you, if for a particular reaction, the value of activation energy is zero. If activation energy is zero, e raised to power zero is one, it means all collision will be effective, then the answer will be K is equal to A. Now, another question. For a reaction A giving you B, the value of rate constant of K is given as this much and at 298 Kelvin. Again, at 308 Kelvin, he has given you the value this. Then he asks, what is the order of reaction? There are certain questions like this in which you have to see simply the units. He has given you the rate constant and its units are mole inverse, liter second inverse, which is for a second order reaction. No, no, no need to solve this question. Simply by seeing this units, you can say it is a second order reaction. So you can get some questions where simply by seeing the units, you can predict the order of reaction. You can predict the answer of the question. Instead of going over a number of steps, later on you realize, oh, the units of only one question were correct. Now, another question regarding the half-life period. You know, half-life period is the time during which the concentration of the reacting substance is reduced to half. You must know that in the case of radioactive substance, half-life period is the time during which the number of radioactive nuclide reduces to half. Because in that case, all the molecules may not be radioactive. So only those molecules which are radioactive, their concentration reduces to half. Whenever you, you are reading the choices, please read it carefully. He may, he may give you the concentration reduces to half, the number of radioactive nuclei reduces to half. So the best answer will be the number of radioactive nuclei reduces to half. Now let us take a question. Half-life of a substance following first order kinetics is 5 days. Starting with 100 gram of A, amount left after 15 days is, dear students, amount left after time t is given by the expression A is equal to A naught into half raised to power n where n is the number of half-lives, means total time divided by half-life period. Here total time is 15 days, half-life is 5 days, so the value of n comes out to be 3. It means that the amount left will be equal to half raised to power 3 into a naught, which will come out to be 100 into 1 upon 8, that is to say 12.5 grams. So you get a general formula that amount left after n half lives is equal to a naught into half raised to power 